Hello everyone, Gainer here from HDB Upgrading Strategies and welcome back to my Facebook Live episode 33. And uh, what I'm going to share with you guys today, actually I'm going to share with you guys this um, four common pitfalls that property buyers and investors make that actually will affect their eventual profits, right? So uh, once again, this is Facebook Live, so uh, if you guys can actually hear me loud and clear, or probably you guys can actually see my screen, please uh, do let me know. Uh, probably give me a thumbs up so that I know. Uh, because just now, I think I tried to do it and probably I have some issue with it. And that's why uh, I have some that probably sees, you know, you can hear me, but you cannot see my screen video. So for those coming in live now, once again, let me repeat. Now, welcome back to my Facebook Live episode 33. Today is my episode 33. Right, and what I'm going to share with you guys today, uh, today I'm going to share with you guys this four common pitfalls, right, that property buyers and investors make that will eventually affect their profits. And I think that this is extremely important, right? So without further ado, let me, let me probably just drill in to the four common pitfalls, okay? So what is the number one pitfall? Right, the number one pitfall I think uh, for me is really very important because I've probably covered this um, this factor in some of my Facebook live videos, which is the number one is actually your uh, no holding power, right? Uh, why no holding power? Uh, because we have to come back to the objective of why we are buying a property, right? Because if let's say you're buying an investment property or probably you're buying a property that you just want to upgrade, right? And you probably know your finances well enough. And if you think that you probably don't have enough finances that you cannot tie through, which is your holding power, then this is something I think is really very dangerous uh, because probably you will need to force sell if there's something really drastic that happened to you probably loss of jobs, you know, stuff like that. So I think holding power is something you have to really understand whether you have that as well, right? So what is the second uh, common pitfall, which is, I think this is important, is very relevant, which is what I call emotions, right? So emotions is something I think is, you know, probably you will face emotions, uncertainty or probably fear, uh, throughout over the years whenever you hold an investment property. Why I say so? Let me probably just give you an example. Um, uh, like now, currently, in this situation whereby we have the virus issue, right? So I do understand probably there'll be buyers that are standing by the sideline. They are not too sure whether should they buy something or probably should they sell their property because they are not even um, clear or certain whether would would their jobs be affected? You know, such a thing can happen. That's why you will be probably running through a lot of emotions, uncertainty and fear. And then I think that this is in, this is really very relevant, right? Now, the third one I think is important is what we call property price, right? Uh, whether did you buy the property at the right price, right? Especially when in today's market, when, 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 when you are looking to buy, would you probably think that is it the right price, right? And the last one I think is important. Why important? Which is this, is not seizing opportunity. What do I mean by not seizing opportunity? This is about taking action and taking the right action. Whether today are you seizing an opportunity to buy a property, right? You know, stuff like that. So to me, I think these are the four common pitfalls that property buyers or investors actually will make that will actually affect their eventual profits. Right, and with this, I'm going to use a case study. Right, this case study is actually uh, a particular unit, just one unit, which uh, went through different times, different prices. There will be buyers and sellers buying this particular unit, and I'm going to, you know, relate this transaction. You know, all the different transactions just for this particular unit, and how it, all these four common pitfalls actually affect it. Right. So uh, thanks, you know, thank you so much. Once again, this is my Facebook Live. Uh, and if you guys can probably hear me loud and clear, if you guys can see my screen video, please probably give me some comments, give me some likes so that I know that I'm actually on the right track, right? Thank you so much. And without further ado, I'm going to proceed again. 
right? So this particular condo that I'm going to share with you guys is actually this, uh, is Coven Residences. Now for people who are not too sure where it's Coven Residences, is actually in fact at this uh, Coven uh, MRT, it's just above Coven MRT. And there's this particular unit which is uh, here, it is actually stack 12, I cannot review the level uh, due to PDBA, but you can really see that this particular unit exchange hands a total of four times, right? Probably uh, one, uh, one, two, three, four, four times. And this four times, ex I mean, it exchanged four times, actually, it has different dates bought and sold. And all these different dates bought and sold are of different price point, right? Which I'm going to show you very, very clearly, right? Uh, in this uh, next slide, okay? So I'm going to probably put my screen uh, so that you guys can see, which is much clearer, right? Okay, right? Okay, so good. Now you guys can probably see the screen much clearer, right? Before I go to the next slide. Now, what you are seeing now is actually this property price index. This is actually the historical property price index. And I put here, this is the past transacted prices, uh, past transactions of this particular unit. And you can see I put one, two, three, four, five, right? This is actually, you know, the first buyer, second buyer, third buyer, fourth buyer, and fifth buyer. So to show to you that actually he has exchanged hands uh, many, many times. And, uh, and actually I put this four different <clears throat> four different um, common pitfalls just right to it so that whenever whenever I'm going to go through all different points of time I can relate this back to all these four different factors these four different pitfalls right okay thank you Esther thanks for telling me that the screen is now okay thank you so much right it's really a boost of confidence <laughs> okay so now I'm going to review this the first buyer actually bought in 2008 right and actually, it bought in this point of time. Now, if you guys know where is this point of time during this historical price index, this is actually going to have this uh, layman crisis, right? That's why it actually went all the way down and all the way up, right? So the magical question, how much did this buyer bought in 2008? In fact, it bought at $930 per square foot. And the price bought is actually 1.171 million is actually 1259 square feet now <clears throat> the thing is that if you are a buyer who bought in this point of time before they actually went all the way down you will be probably running through a lot of emotions a lot of uncertainty and a lot of fear right so this is one of the common pitfalls that you will probably be facing and true enough this buyer which is the first buyer actually sold the property in 2010 now the question I want to ask you, at this point of time, will you sell and here, will you hold or will you buy, right? Of course, uh, having said that, you already, see, <clears throat> you already see this past history. Now, of course, you can just tell me what is going to happen, what we're going to do. But let's just probably, you know, just, just probably just think that you don't know what is going to happen here and you are at this point of time. Will you sell? Will you hold or will you buy? Right? Now, of course, this buyer or this this buyer, the first buyer who bought in 2008, he actually sold in 2010. Right? And what was the price he sold? He actually sold at 950000 which makes a total loss of $221,000. Now, you, you, you probably might be thinking, hey, this property price index went all the way down, it went all the way up, and it seems to be on par, right? And, and, and maybe i ask you this question, right? If you are this buyer, and you know that you went through layman crisis, and you know that it's going up, at this point of time, now the question comes back to you. Will you feel uncertain? Will it go all the way, continuously go up? Or probably it will go down. So, and... Also as well, this buyer probably might think that, hey, I may not have the holding power as well. And that's why he sold and he made a loss of 221000 And this buyer, which is who bought from him, probably he's also seizing the opportunity. He may not be sure whether he bought a good buy, but he thought that he probably bought at a low price, right? How he can even go lower, it can 
even go higher. And that's why this buyer who bought at $950,000 probably will look at, hey, if I have this holding power, how long can I hold? So these are the four different things that will run through at all these different points of time, right? But I'm going to share with you, this buyer who bought in 2010, he sold in May 2010, which is just a difference of four, five months. Now, of course, you will look at it, you know, during those times, you can actually buy and sell in a very short period of time. But as of now, today, you can't because of this seller stamp duty tax, right? You have these three years of seller stamp duty tax, right? And, and you probably can't do much. But for this buyer, he sold. And <clears throat> at this point of time, the question comes again. Will you sell? Will you hold? Or will you buy? Right? And this buyer who bought at $950,000, saw this an opportunity and immediately sold. And how much did he sold? He sold at 1.172 million. And within just, right, four months, he made $220,000. Probably you might be thinking, wow, this, this person who just sold within the four months actually made 220 over thousand, which is so easy. And you probably look at this person who bought at 2008, if only he could have this more holding power, he can tie through this, right? But he didn't. Because why? There are emotions coming to him, uncertainty, and there's fear, and that's why he let it go. And if he could have just hoped for another four months, just four to five months, he probably don't even make a loss at all. Yes, Nizam, 1.172 million for just within four months. So you can, you know, I want to extract this example because you can really see that if a private property or property prices shoot up and it shoots up, it is from like that shoot all the way up. Can you see how steep this curve is? And, and <clears throat> I always have been sharing with my, with my clients this very important thing. There are a few factors how you make money from property, you know, from, from property investment. Right. First of all, you really have to understand the price point that you buy. The second thing is really when you sell. I repeat again, it's really when you sell. And when you sell will eventually determine how much you will make. Right? You can probably hold for 10 years and you don't even make a single cent. You can probably hold for 4 to 5 years and you see that opportunity is there. You sell and you immediately make a profit. Right, of course, all these things we never know how is the future like, but probably you will have to understand when is the property price during then, and you probably have to make a bold decision, right? So all this takes a lot of understanding, and of course, once again, one of the pitfalls that I mentioned is seizing the right opportunity as well, right? Coming back again, of course, this this seller, uh, this buyer who who bought in January 2010, sold in May, made this, this uh, 220000 and the next buyer actually bought in this, 1.17 million. Now, and this 1.1, I mean, and this buyer who bought in May 2010, sold in 2011, which is at this point of time, right? This point of time. The question I want to ask you again, will you sell, will you hold, or will you buy, right? I, I remember I did once um, mention about this Facebook post, you know, I highlighted this property investment is just like a marathon, you know, a baton, running a baton is kind of competition. It is when you pass this baton to the next buyer, right? How long you want to hold, how fast you want to hold, you pass it to the next, but, you know, next buyer. And of course, this buyer, uh, this buyer who actually sold in 2011, sold at this price, at uh, this point, this, this peak, and how much? He sold at 1.143 million and that person made $258,000 in just, I think, what, a year plus? Just a year plus? Right? Just a year plus made another 250 over 1,000. So coming back, this owner, this very first owner in 2008, if only he could hold, have a much, much more holding power, right? And of course, <clears throat> Coming back to this 2011, this buyer who bought 1.43 million, eventually he sold, he sold here. This is where cooling measures came, 
right? In 2013, government introduced cooling measures and the prices went down. And this buyer who bought here or this seller who sold here probably will think that, hey, it's a good time to buy. And so how much that person, you know, that, that buyer bought, he bought at 1.49 million. And that person who bought in 2011 only made $65,000 in terms of profit. And of course, this buyer who bought in 2015, of course, he's holding till now. This is just one particular unit, right? So, you know, with this, I just want to share with you guys uh, with this price, uh, property price index, with this, all these differences in terms of date, in terms of selling prices, and using this four different pitfalls to illustrate to you guys, to let you guys understand that, hey, you know, if you have a holding power just like this person, if he bought in 2008 at 1.17 million and he probably tied it all the way through here and he sold at 1.495 million, he probably still made a profit of around what two, three hundred thousand dollars, but he didn't have that holding power. Of course, a lot of emotions run through between all these different dates because these are all the different transactions. Emotions run very high, especially um, uncertainty, fear, greed run through during this point of time, especially when it surge all the way up from here to here, right? And as well as property prices, different buyers, different sellers will think whether am I buying at the right price, whether am I selling at the right price. And lastly, it's also about seizing the right opportunity. Now, I'm very sure that during this period of time, there are always a lot of property buyers or investors who will want to stand by the sideline and not doing anything. But in fact, if you look at it, if you could have seized the opportunity at different points of time, you could have probably also made some money out of it, but you didn't. You know, some, they probably didn't seize that opportunity and just stay as where it is. Because there's always some buyers that no matter what, they will not do anything. Even deep down, they probably just want to buy something, but they don't take action, right? So coming back, we come back to at this very point of time, especially I'm talking about this virus issue. The question we are now at this point of time, the prices will probably be going up. The prices will probably be going down, right? The question is, if you are a seller, will you sell now? Or probably if you are the buyer, will you actually hold? Or if you are a buyer today, will you actually buy? right that's why i think at this point of time you know for me personally i think especially when i want to come back to this um these four different common pitfalls these are the things that you'll be running through every time whenever we talk about property investment right whether you want to buy or you want to sell you know stuff like that and i think what i'm going to give you the best and okay uh, and advice that i personally always share with my clients is this very important thing you really, really have to know whether you have the holding power. Now, if you don't have the holding power, then I think probably you have to relook whether should you buy or should you sell, right? And probably, especially when emotions, you probably have to really understand whether you are someone that can hold through different timings, especially when this point of time, right? So you must understand yourself. And most important, you must also understand whether are you buying at the right property price. Of course, at this point of time, you are not too sure whether am I buying the right price. But buying the right price, you have to understand how you are able to analyze, especially you look at the surrounding, you know, property prices around the project that you want to buy. So this takes a while for you to analyze. And lastly, I also want to emphasize, you have to take action. If you don't take action, nothing will happen. Of course, with this current virus issue, we are not too sure whether what I'm going to do, you know, what you guys are probably going to do with the property prices go up, or will we go down? But of course, I strongly believe that there are still good buys around. It's just that we have to be more careful at this point of time, right? So with that, you know, I hope you guys uh, love this Facebook Live episode 33 that I just shared with you guys. And I hope that you guys understand where I'm coming from, especially the case study that I extracted out to show to you guys at different point of times you will be running through all these different pitfalls that you will be facing. And it's important for you to, to seek someone to understand so that you are able to make a right decision, right? With that, 
Thank you so much for listening or watching my this Facebook live video. I apologize because I think when I first started out, the screen was blank. And I now I think that this has gone well. Thank you so much. And once again, if you guys don't have any more questions or inquiries, and I hope you guys can probably give me more likes, more, and probably if you are watching it at a different time, you just give me more inquiries. I will probably post my answers in this Facebook live video as well. With that, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Stay healthy and stay happy. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.